everyone. As you all know, Christina and I have been promising you a video post Forbidden Journey Retreat. And we're excited to share from our perspective what went down in Breckenridge, Colorado. And I have to say that um, I'm so happy you're here and that you did this with me because I couldn't imagine of being more supported by anyone other than you. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, it was an incredible time. And of course, you guys saw the video with Cormac. And if you haven't seen that one, I highly suggest you go and watch that video because he shared his incredible spontaneous healing experience with seventh dimensional beings who literally brought in tools and worked on the side of his head where he had a huge traumatic injury from 20 years ago. And now his hearing's restored. All of these things are restored. His joy is back. Like he just feels like he returned to his God <laughs> blueprint, which was, yeah, his very small request in his mushroom journey. <laughs> Enor enormous attentions, enormous intentions. Yeah. So first of all, um, you know, you, I think the, it's important for the audience to know, well, one, we're doing another one really, really soon. So just keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to be releasing the um, ticket sales probably a lot sooner than you think. It might even be at the end of this month. So just stay tuned. Um, but you've done many retreats. Like this is your thing. This is why I was so wanting Christine to be here is because Christina, you've like, You've done like 20 retreats. Yeah, I've done a, I've done a lot of retreats around the world in Bali and in Ibiza and in New Zealand and um, and they're usually like a week long retreats and surf and yoga and nutrition and oils and health and well-being, but this was by far the most transformational um, retreat that I've ever done and it was absolutely amazing and it was only 3 nights, but it was an enormous 3 nights. Um, and I'm just so excited about it. And I feel like the impact that we had was just, just a, so deep on a soul level and the connection that we also had. And I have to say with Nicole bringing together community, it was amazing. Yeah, the community part yeah. is so important. And um, what was cool is that we had a few people from the Alchemy group who already had known each other just through our Sunday night calls that we have once a month in Alchemy. Uh, so... Don, Stacy, Cormac, they were already, um, they had some awareness of who they were and, 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 that, and that kind of relationship. But we did bring everyone together in a call beforehand so mm -hmm. everyone could meet because that was really important. I didn't want anyone who was coming to the retreat to feel like they were meeting everyone for the first time. We needed to break that wall immediately beforehand so that everyone could just immerse themselves in the connection um, process. But I think like, okay, what was your highlight from the retreat? Like, <laughs> I don't know. All of it was amazing. And I do feel like um, what happened from the beginning to the end is there was such openness and open heartedness, like starting out with the cacao, going into the meditations. Everybody was so loving and sharing and the community that we established during the whole process was absolutely amazing. And I feel like that led to a lot of transformation throughout every single thing that we did. I mean, everyone went deep. Yeah, and amazingly enough, like I've been connecting with orcas and whales from being um, where I live at the beach and we did this amazing meditation that we had no idea that it was gonna be so powerful. It was powerful for everybody. Um, but that was a huge stepping stone to getting a little bit deeper when everybody went in the journey. But I, Nicole and I were talking and we're one, we're really good at working together, which was absolutely amazing. And people felt really held and safe and secure to go in whatever direction they wanted to go in. And I felt like I love teaching and you love teaching mm -hmm. and we love leading. So it was really just holding, holding that space for people was really, amazing for me. I, you know, and that's what's, okay, so this is what was so beautiful for me too, was holding space for other people's journeys. I mean, mm -hmm. I've done my own journeys countless times and it was really cool to actually hold space for everyone. I enjoyed it much more than I was anticipating. Like I knew I was going to like it, but I didn't realize I was going to enjoy it to the level that I did. I found like being able to take care of everyone yeah. and nurture them and um, help them feel safer to go deeper into their journey or they were hitting a wall or resistance because that can happen 
um, or there's major emotional breakthroughs where there's a lot of emotion surfacing. Like that was really cool to be there for them. Um, you know, what was really cool too, as I kind of briefly mentioned in the video with Cormac earlier, was that I didn't anticipate actually tapping into the medicine frequency at the level that I did considering I wasn't anywhere near the dosage <laughs> that everyone else was on. And I mean, we just had cacao in a micro. Yeah. And it was just so that we could be in the energetic flow with everyone and be on their level and have our hearts opened and be really tuned in. But there was a period, there was a moment, I think within the three to four hour mark of uh, the journey where I just felt like I could let go. I, and this is, I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't feel confident in Christina holding space. Like, and this is why it was so cool to do it because, mm. you know, had I been doing it alone, which never would have, no, 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 no yeah. never. But it, had I been, there was no way I could have been doing that and then know that everyone else is being taken care of. So that was a gift in its yeah. own because I was able to, I was receiving a transmission from another planet in the Milky Way that is an Earth-like planet. Um, and it is a planet that I connected with through the dream state, which is funny because we saw talking about the Pirates of Pisces, yeah. um, many years ago. And I had Tony Rodriguez on my podcast and we talked about it because he confirmed some of the, the aspects that came up in my dream that I thought, oh, this isn't real. This is just a part of my dream, you know? And he's like, no, that actually exists. And it was when I was on this, um, I was on this spaceship and I remember being in, I guess, what they call them on regular ships, bridges, right? And there, you know, you see like, there's kind of like, I, for lack of a better term, like a windshield, okay? And I remember we were going through the Milky Way because I could remember seeing all like the different kind of colors and star like clouds and stuff. And, and then all of a sudden on the windshield, there was all these oil droplets and it was getting greasy on the, the, this, uh, window. <laughs> and I instantly in my dream thought, Oh, see, that's how I know I'm not really in space because there's no oil in space. And that's when uh, the next day, one of my girlfriends reached out to me and sent me an article from the scientific journal that said that in the Milky Way, there is an oily substance. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like you can't even make this stuff up. And then of course, um, Tony confirmed that this is true, that going through the Milky Way, you will see the, this oily substance come up. So what I, the, this is a very long winded way of telling you guys, that I was reconnecting with this planet and I hadn't connected with it since that dream uh, many years ago and they were providing a healing. Mm -hmm. So I opened up the portal for us to, to, to create that transmission and I was able to pull through all these light codes, which I guess you guys were all watching. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And this is, and this is in, to a point where everybody was really open. Um, so it was amazing to see everything come in. And then also when you opened it up, other people were tapping into that healing power. So yeah. They wanted to, the planet, the people or the beings from this planet, it's a very earth-like planet, were willing to communicate with everyone, um, in the retreat on their journey. And so I told people like you're, it's open, you can communicate. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people were able to tap in and were getting messages, which was really cool. It was so cool. Yeah. So it was, it was a wild, wild experience to say the least. I think the depth of healing and um, experiences was largely in part to, to the people that showed up yeah. and the openness and willingness to be as vulnerable as they were. Everyone was so vulnerable. Yeah. And I think it was also, I mean, there was a lot of lightness in the whole retreat, like from when we started with the cacao and the food that we had that was nourishing and then I did movement in the mornings and we just made sure everybody was taken care of. We did um, a multitude of different meditations and then we did art. We just really integrated things really well and I feel like there was a little bit for everybody and everybody could tap into all the stuff that you've been working with forever like between astrology and inner child and and also some of the techniques I work with. We were just talking about that how well they work together. It's like uncovering certain things but then all, letting them go and being into your body and integrating and just um, being really present. 
And that really expanded everybody's consciousness all around. Yeah, it was it was so important. And I mean, what was so beautiful too was it was so important to me that everyone felt nurtured and yeah. cared for. And that would allow them to feel safe enough to go into the spaces and places that they did. And so part of that is, is that the way I love people is through cooking for them. And so I made like all these soups, like oh four different soups. Amazing <laughs> food the entire time. Um, it was just like, let me like make all the stuff. And we brought in like really good um, baked goods and breads and all that kind of stuff that we knew were going to be really nice and grounding because I'm not really a carb person, so to speak. But when you're doing these retreats, you do need some of those energy sources the that nourishment. the nourishment, but it's comforting. It's really important for you to feel comforted. And so the soups were really good in that. And plus it was cooler at night. Yeah, it was really good with the food and with the nourishment. It's just like we said, you know, one of the ways we were taking care of people. The one thing that I did want to mention too is working together. One of my things was making sure that you were shining as much as you could and that um, you were giving and in your power and in that flow the entire time. So I was really making sure that you were taking you care did a of fantastic as job. well. So that was like <laughs> one of my things. So yeah, and it was really um, good for you to see that. And I think Cormac and I really, as much as we could. Yeah. Because Cormac was a great yeah. big help as well. You know, he was able to pick a couple people up from the airport. Yeah. Surprise! They got a good dose of Cormac in the almost two-hour ride up to the retreat, which they loved. They yeah. said that was actually one of the highlights. <laughs> yeah. It was getting picked up by Cormac. So um, we're going to probably do that again next time. <laughs> Uh, so it was, you know, you supported me so much, which allowed me, and, and we were just talking about this in my backyard, yeah. how, you know, when you're in partnership, whatever kind of partnership it is, whether it's business or relationship, whatever kind of partnership is, you want that partner to be able to elevate you into your highest place. Like you're both lifting each other up. And I felt like that's what we did for one yeah. another. And it was like, I didn't even need to ask. You just knew what I needed before I even needed. Like I turned around, it was already done. <laughs> so it was like amazing. And like you and yeah. I are very similar yeah. and we're very, um, we're very like a type personalities, we're strong. right? Yeah. And <laughs> we, you know, we, we know what needs to get done. And this is the other thing too. We Sweet. noticed, um, is how good we are at integrating the 5D and the 3D and how we can slip in and out of those different kind of um, frequencies uh, like nothing. Yeah. Because in one instance, we're like, we're holding space, we're guiding, we're taking whatever, and then we're like, okay, now this food has to go out now and like get, make sure we have this out. And then we're like, okay, and then you know, <laughs> and it was just like this constant like flow back yeah. and forth from 3D to 5D. It was very fluid. And I it think was that was... Awesome one of the questions that came up on the retreat was like, how do you, and, and I, it wasn't this exact question, but it kind of relates in um, learning how to kind of pull in that higher frequency, but also honor the frequencies of the present moment of this earth mm -hmm. existence and knowing how to do both, right? Because I think that's yeah. ultimately one of the biggest hurdles of this journey, especially when you start to get really spiritual in nature and start to dive into more of the mysteries and the unseen realms, yeah. is like how do you integrate and hold, hold your existence in both? Yeah. And I think we realized that's something that we were able to just do seamlessly, which was really cool. I do agree. Yeah, and I think it's important. And I think that's something that I, I believe what people want to attain um, is if you're more 3D or more 5D, you need to integrate and learn how to bring in the two balanced and know how to slip in and out of those different frequencies or hold both those frequencies at the exact the same, same time. time. Yeah. Because that's the multidimensional aspect of ourselves. So, I mean, I think what was really cool during the whale meditation, because that seemed to be... Um, that was a huge highlight. Yeah, like a that huge was, highlight for everyone. That was, that was before the journey. That was yeah. that was just pure um, energy medicine. Yeah. You know, was you felt it? There yeah. was a moment where, as soon there was some moment in the meditation where everything shifted in the room. Yeah, for, and you felt it within everyone. You're like, oh, everyone just shifted. It was so cool because it allowed people to meet things 
whether it was certain emotions, yeah. beings, whatever it was that were preparing them for their actual journey hours later, which was really cool. And these are the things that you just don't realize. Yeah. You can't prepare for. But again, speaking of preparation. Yeah. There were parts times where you're like, Nicole, less is more. You yeah. kept telling me, Nicole, less is more. Don't worry about it. Less is more. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I was hearing her. And I was like, but what if? <laughs> I just what don't want to be this? underprepared. <laughs> but it was true. We were so prepared. Yeah. But the cool thing about us working together is that um, we really had a, a really strong structure because, you know, we're both entrepreneurs and we both like love structure and we're very organized. But then we had this fluidity where everything actually worked out perfectly on time for everything. There was no rush, but everybody was perfectly prepared. Everything was right up. Like it, it was so fluid that it felt really easy. Um, so it was a really, even though it was a deeply transformative experience, it felt really soft and really graceful throughout the whole, the whole weekend. I loved how the elements were communicating with us. It just seemed like from journey day onward, it just got more and more powerful because what a lot of people don't realize is when you do these medicine journeys, you're actually opening a portal above you um, where the, the higher levels of consciousness are streaming in and downloading into you. You are still with the medicine days, if not weeks later, mm -hmm. and often like even with like a more, um, I, I don't want to say aggressive, but it is. Ayahuasca is a much more aggressive um, experience. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, but it can be is what I want to say um, because the purge is so big. But, you know, ayahuasca often stays with you for months, if not a year, still working through you. And so these plant medicines um, are opening this portal that, you know, we're just kind of letting everyone know in the in our yeah our retreat telegram chat that you know it's okay because you're going to still be receiving information and let's just talk about too how mm. important it is to understand the one the importance of community and the yeah. importance of integration Huge. when it comes to these journeys these plant medicine journeys and retreats in general mm. um because you can experience moments of low after yeah. being on such a high you know, you meet all these people, you have all these incredible connections, you're sharing these beautiful experiences, your heart's so open, your pineal gland so open, you know, and it's yeah. transformation is just like snowballing. And then, you know, you get back to real life and it can kind of hit you a little hard sometimes, but there is, there is a process or ebbs and flows yeah. in the healing and the integration afterwards. And that's, one of the important reasons why I want to say for all of you who are at the retreat, stay active in the telegram yeah. chat. And of course, reach out. Yeah. We're going to have our post retreat call in a couple of weeks. Integration is so important there. It's Huge. not just about the actual moment of the journey, those hours, whatever. It's all of the aftermath as and, well. And you're a new person. Mm -hmm. Literally everybody stepped out into a new, whether it was getting, letting go of different things in their life, letting go of different programs, letting go of, of anger of anything. And, and you come out a completely different person. Everybody was literally lighter. And so you come out into this world, into your the world that you were in as a new person, but you we want to make sure when we're talking about this is so important for community and it's so important for integration. And it's so important to know that this is normal and it's so important to, you know, still stay in your heart, even, even though it might feel different. So I think that's a huge because education. You do have this high when you're there, yeah. you know, and the come down can be for some, it can be a little more transitional. For others, it can be a little drastic. Yeah. And so it's just understanding, being um, gentle with yourself and the process and just knowing it is a process. Yeah. I think one of the coolest exercises was the artwork because we got everyone to paint their vision, their journey the next day, whatever wanted to be expressed. And, you know, you're, so you're I'm an artist. artist. I, yeah, I'm an artist. And so I love leading people in what I call the expression, expression session, where as an artist, you're vulnerable. So it's like kind of almost a soul to soul journey. When someone sees your art, they see your soul. And so we talked a lot about after the journey, what 
your painting is your expression of what you, you saw or what you felt. It's more of what you felt and there's no judgment on it. We just had a whole bunch of colors down and I talked people through like, just put, put your soul down. And it was really amazing to see people's transformation. One, to not have judgment and full love for themselves. And there was some judgment that kind of creeps in as you do art if you're not an artist. Um, and even when you are an artist, but there was this, this vulnerability and this open heartedness that everybody expressed on their canvas. And that is something they could take with them as well. Yeah. I think that and was, even you. Yeah. So it was cool because um, in my particular painting, I wanted to bring forth one, the, the Milky Way yeah. that I vision that I saw when I was connecting with that other planet, which was called the... the it's something like hydro hydrangene or some. It's not. It's something like along those lines. Um, I couldn't partic I couldn't get it exactly, but um, it was purple. It was a lot of purple energies um, that yeah. I saw. But then I also wanted to mix in the colors of teal and black because of the whale and the black jaguar that were with me um, throughout the time. Throughout the, I called them in for the journey for everyone. Mm -hmm. We invoked black jaguar and whale. They were for definitely protection. there. One hundred percent. In fact, with one of the people there, I won't say who it was, but. Um, there was some resistance and we needed to bring in black jaguar call in yeah. this person's ancestors my ancestors to put up an energy field around them because they were getting interference that was preventing them from going deeper and i saw my black jaguar circling around us and then i saw all of these um angelic pink angelic celestial beings descending upon this person and bringing in all this really high frequency light which which I now know why we had so much celestial and angelic beings mm -hmm. there was because um, Cormac uh, had a conversation on the street before the journey with Yeshua. And he appeared with a cloth over his arm and asked to be invited in. And of course, it had to be Cormac who invited him. He has such a strong connection to Yeshua. And so I now understood, because I couldn't, I was like, why am I seeing all of these angelic beings? Like, I've never seen it this strongly. And especially, like, just on my own without, like, if I was on mushrooms, maybe it would have been, you know. But um, I saw all these angelic beings coming in, and they, it was just to bring an extra protection mm -hmm. for everyone. And then with this particular person, I saw one of their ancestors standing behind them, putting their hands on this person's back to comfort them and um, gave me a message to give to them on how to go deeper into their journey, which was really beautiful. Really, I think all of us opened up and were able to see things that were much more vivid and much more powerful. Um, and even people were opening up the next day even more so than even in their journey. So it was... It was huge it was, the next day with the integration and, and even just when you brought it out in the art, you started mm -hmm. feeling it again. And, and that was really cool to solidify it, almost like what we were talking about in back in the 3D. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, what does it feel like? What can I do? How can I express it? Because sometimes that integration is expression. And a lot of times that is expression. Mm -hmm. So it was really amazing to see what people were putting down with that vulnerability and that newness and that lightness that they had come through at the end of the journey. And it just kept continuing that whole day from the art and the movement and the hot tub. Oh yeah, the hot tub. The hot tub. So <laughs> but Listen. yeah, that was yeah. that was like really cool. And I think too, um, the time so when we talk fun. about timing, so when we talk about timing, there's oh, things yeah. we couldn't have planned for. Yeah. Now I knew that I wanted to get. I knew I wanted to be there when the aspens were changing color. Oh, yeah because they're so beautiful. It's what everyone goes into the mountains for. Even the locals here, we, we get into the mountains the last two weeks of September, the first week of October. It depends on it, it depends on the timing because sometimes it's a little later, sometimes it's a little earlier. You just never know. We managed to get up there at the best potent time of the aspens turning color because the, the yellow was like this deep orange yellow. You know, so vibrant. Solar plexus. I know, yeah. solar plexus, sacral solar, yeah. you know, like just really beautiful and blooming in color there. But the usually the potency of that color is about five days. Like you, it's not that you won't see it for longer, but the vibrancy is like, you know, about five days. And we got up there during the peak. 
You stayed up there after we left. You were staying with friends and tell them what happened. Well, so like two days after it snowed and literally the wind wiped out all the aspens where we were in that area. It was crazy. All the leaves gone on the floor. All the leaves gone. All the leaves gone. <laughs> so all the aspens were just, yeah, it was, it was like we hit it at the perfect timing. Mm -hmm. And although we did our nature walks and we grounded and all that kind of stuff, but the place where we stayed, and that's where we're going to stay again, um, is surrounded. You feel like you're, even though you're inside, it feels like you're outside in nature, which was so special about this area as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we were just steps away from like a trailhead that's yeah. a really easy trail. It's not like super yeah. difficult. And the moon. And the just, moon. Oh my God, we watched everything, the moon everything set. Was, everything was insane. Okay, so. I don't even know what's going to happen in the next retreat. Okay, so the, you know, the cacao ceremony was the first night. And then in the middle of the night at 4 a.m. our time, was when the moon was fullest and we were sharing a bedroom in the master and there's all these windows up there. And in the middle of the night, you know, I got up, I, well, no, it was like 5.30, right? Yeah, 5, we 5.30, it was we just after, it was like 5, 5.30. And I had gotten up, so, cause we were getting ready to prepare. We were gonna get up to get coffee on, breakfast, all that stuff. And I'm in the bathroom brushing my teeth and I hear her just mumbling something. And I turn around the corner to look at her in the bed. I go, what? She goes, I'm, the moonlight is right on my face. <laughs> the, literally, the moon was coming in and all the... It's it like, like a, this window. I know. And it was like a, a spotlight, literally like just honing in on Christina. And I'm like, oh my God, you're getting a bath from the full moon. It was insane. The yeah. moon was just, the whole thing was just, I don't know. I don't even know what was happening. I know. It was like magic from when we got there until when we left. And then, so we went so. downstairs and Cormac was up too. And we all decided, the three of us to go out on the deck because not I don't think everyone was up yet maybe mm. one person um but we all stood and watched the moon set behind the mountains and it was gorgeous it's like so cool. I had tears in I my know eyes. I'm like getting chills still it oh was my god like, it was like I haven't seen anything like I've seen yeah. the moon set before on the sea horizon but behind the mountains was yeah. really special because it was, amazing. it was at the perfect time where the sun and the moon are in opposite ends mm -hmm. right because we just came off the full moon yeah so in the morning the sun was hitting the mountain range so you had the mountain range lighting up in sunlight and then you had the moon going behind it it was so pretty like <laughs> Everything was just insane. Yeah. And, and the amount of presence, and this is why what's really cool about these kind of soulful retreats that you prepare for and you do some, you know, obviously some meditations and work for. It's just you're so present in every single moment that you can see things like that. Mm -hmm. You don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. And which was, which I think is just such a gift that that's that yeah i just yeah. can't talk enough about it i know it, it was all lined up i know fluid. so we're okay. gonna be doing another yes. one we're already planning it um it'll probably be end of april ish somewhere around there so um mark it on your calendar we'll be releasing the details probably at the end of this month uh and we'll start uh selling more tickets that's so awesome. uh stay tuned for all of that and of course if you're looking for community right now, I highly suggest joining Alchemy. If you're looking for your community or needing a place to, you know, share and, exactly. and all that because it's so supportive. I was just like, so I couldn't amazing. be in that community over the weekend, but I could see all the messages coming through and they're just so supportive in there. So if you're looking for community, that's a great thing. And of course, if you need any help or assistance, you know, go onto my website. You can book a session with me. Or, Christina, what's your website if they want to book sessions with you? Swell Fit Living. Swell Fit Living. I'll leave yeah. that in the description below. So, guys, looking forward to it. And don't uh, miss this week's podcast coming out. You're going to love it. It's one of my favorites. Oh, my God. Soul Astrology does it in a completely new way. A way oh, yeah. that was downloaded through old Atlantean times. You don't want to miss it. I love you guys. Have an amazing weekend. And I'll see you soon.